I'm going to explain the frequency and pitch control audio effects in this lesson. So go to Working Files, Projects, and scroll on down to 1903 Frequency Pitch. I have three audio clips here with a subset of the full group of frequency and pitch effects on each one. I'm going to go through them one at a time, starting with the Gettysburg Address excerpt. Going to Effect Controls, I've got four of the frequency and pitch control effects on here. Bass, treble, phaser, and pitch shifter. I think bass and treble are kind of intuitive. I'll just start by working with those. Turn on bass, and we'll just kind of raise or lower the bass range, the low end. Doesn't tell you exactly what the bass range is here, but it's probably from about zero cycles per second to somewhere around maybe 500 or something like that. Score and seven years ago. Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty. So at the higher end there, it gets kind of thumpy, and the lower end, it uh, reduces and some of the bass. dedicated to the proposition that all men kind of thins it out. The treble end actually kind of makes the voice a little more pointed. Let me try that one here. Four and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty. There you go. And dedicated to the... And we'll move on down to phaser. Now, phaser is kind of like a sound effect more than something where you're changing pitch. But what it does is it changes phase in certain frequency ranges depending on your controls here. When you look off to the right here, you see this little knob there? That's a preset, so you can go through these presets to kind of help you find a sound that you like, and then you can customize them over here. So let's just go through those presets. I'll just click through them one at a time here. Here we go. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition... I can get a sense of what that's like. I'll do a couple more. Four and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. All right. And all these controls over here are keyframable. You can keyframe them down here under individual parameters. So I'll just swish through a couple of them here and you get a chance to see what they're like and just know that you can have them move, you have them animate over time. Four and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Conceived of the mix down here refers to how much of the original clip comes through versus the one that's been changed by the effect. At 100%, that means that the entire clip has been affected. If you drop this down, you can have it be a little less obvious. Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. That's what that refers to. Okay, close that guy down and go on down to the next one, which is pitch shifter. You can change someone's pitch based on semitones. Now, if you go to this little menu here for the presets, you see it has some presets here too. I'll just go through a few of those. And seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Can I see? <laughs> Proposition that all men. <laughs> So those are the presets, and the way they're working is they're just adjusting the pitch here, and then this little format preserve decides whether it tries to really match the timbre of the original voice or not. I'm going to turn off format preserve. You hear the difference here as I go back and forth. I'll knock it down like four here. Let's listen to it. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. So with format preserve, it tries to preserve the original timbre. With a male voice, it doesn't do that well. We'll try it again a little bit less here, maybe three or two semitones. Years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that... Sense is a fine-tuning. It's like a percentage of a semitone. There you go. That's the male side of these four effects. Let's go to the female side of those four effects. I'll try them again. I'll adjust the bass, treble, phaser, and pitch shifter for Laura Lee Christensen here. We'll do her one at a time. I made a stay. But it just couldn't be that way. So not much going on on her voice at that range because she doesn't really have a voice that drops too far down into the bass range. The treble range, though, that'll have more effect, obviously. You wanted me to stay, but it just couldn't be that way. Kind of gives it just more of a forward feel to it. Turn off the treble. Going down to phaser. Now this is going to be the same kind of routine as before. I'm going to click through some of the presets. Here we go. How much you wanted me to stay? But it just couldn't be that way. Yeah, I know how much you wanted me to stay. But it just could There you go. That's phaser. That's one of those things where you can just do that for fun. I don't think you'd want to do that to make it better quality. We'll try the pitch shifter now. And pitch shifting is something that happens a lot with vocalists where they're just a little bit off. You can fine tune it here with the sense, as it's called or you can make really big changes here. So I'll try to fix her voice by first turning this guy on and then we'll try this out. Here we go. Be that way. Yeah, I know how much you wanted me to stay, but it just couldn't be that so way. at some point, it just isn't really working that well anymore. The voice sounds kind of rough. I'll turn off format preserve and see what that sounds like. 
Well, I know how much you wanted me to stay. But it just couldn't be that way. So Format Preserve tries to preserve the original timbre, but you can see that, let's say, we're on negative three or positive three semitones, it sort of loses track of it and it gets kind of rough sounding. Turn off pitch shifter here. We'll go down to the last clip here, this little musical selection. Love in return. And I've got the other frequency and pitch control effects applied to it. <laughs> Band pass, high pass, low pass, parametric EQ, and EQ. Bandpass says pick a frequency and then everything else will be cut out. So I'll go over here and select Bandpass. So there's the frequency and the Q is how wide is the frequency that you're retaining. The narrower it is obviously, the less you're going to hear. So I'll just play through this and kind of widen things out a bit here. Then I'm going to move the frequency. 1495 is in the treble range. Human hearing can go up to about 20,000 though. So we're going to keep it down here in a vocal range here and just play this a little bit and adjust the Q as we go along. It's only 10 hertz that we can adjust this by, so it's a very narrow range. Here we go. It's a very narrow range there, so it does drop in volume as well. And that kind of swirly sound, you can keyframe if you want to do that. That's band pass, where you're just limiting it to one little spot. You can always put two clips one above the other and just have that band pass be emphasized on top of the whole background. Anyway, we'll go on down to the high pass now. High pass means that you're passing the high frequencies through and you're cutting off the bass frequencies. We'll try that again. All of my love in I never Sounds like kind of a telephone conversation on old style telephones. Low pass is just like high pass in reverse. You're passing the low frequencies through and cutting off the high frequencies. So you want to hear just the bass? There you go. Well, I know how much. There you go. We'll move on down now to EQ and parametric EQ. Now, this is kind of a strange little nomenclature here. Parametric EQ usually refers to the EQ. If you look at EQ here, you see it's got five frequencies that you can choose from to raise or lower. And this is usually called parametric EQ. But in this case, they have parametric EQ be just one frequency. This one frequency that you select here. You determine the Q value, the width again, this goes up to 20, and how much you're going to boost it or drop it. You can cut the frequency here as well. I found that the parametric EQ just does not work that well. So I would suggest just taking a pass on it and focusing instead on EQ. And then if you want to do just one frequency range, you can do that here in this EQ, which would normally be called the parametric EQ. To see it all, I need to pull this thing out. So I'm going to grab the handle right here, hold on the controller command key and pull you out. Let go of the mouse button and slide this thing over so we can kind of get a better look at this. Here we go, pull you up a little ways, pull you down. All these various controls are keyframable, which is good to know. All right, now we got it set up. Let's just give it a little try here. Got a bunch of presets here. I'll run through a few of them and then we'll get back to this. Here we go. Some expecting all of my love in return. I never said that's what I wanted. Make this a lesson, honey, that you learn. Like you get a sense of all the various options there. I'm going to go back to what they call the master EQ, which just has everything more or less at neutral here. You can pull things up or down. Notice you have five frequency ranges. You got high and low, and then you got three in the middle. And then there's Q. The Q value says how wide of a range are you going to work on here. Now that's a really wide range. You can narrow it down by pulling these handles in like that. Same thing with this one here. Again, the handles are kind of far apart, like so, or pull them together. You can actually pull down and remove frequencies, doing what's called a notch. And there is a notch preset. But there's also a notch filter, so I think it's best just to work with a notch filter rather than use this as a notch filter. We'll go back to Master EQ. So that's basically how it works. You decide which frequency ranges you want to affect. If you want to affect all five, that's fine. You can turn one on or off like that. And you determine the width and then how much you're going to pull it up or down here. You can do it with the controls here or down here. And you can keyframe all of these controls. The well, EQ is usually the last step in your production process in terms of how you deal with frequencies. Typically what people do at this point is they kind of affect the loudness. They want to maybe lift the bass, lift the treble, just to give a little more emphasis at both ends like that. So I'm going to go back to default, and then you want, let's say, turn on high, turn on low. You can then lift them up like so, and see what difference that makes. You gave me all your love and then some, expecting all of my love in return. I never said that's what I wanted. Make this a lesson, honey, that you learn. I think you get a sense of how that works. 
So that's a quick run through on the frequency and pitch control effects here inside Premiere Pro.